welcome back to the Fierce Fish First Tech Challenge programming tutorial series. Our goal in this series is to provide simple and straightforward guidance in programming an FTC robot. And in today's video, we are going to be creating an odometry calibration file. So calibration in odometry is actually something I've personally overlooked because I thought it would just be easier to like get the measurements myself rather than calibrating every once in a while. But the calibration is actually very powerful in what it can do. So that is personally what I do when I use odometry from now on, and I hope that you will find use with it as well throughout this video. So this video is going to assume you have this standard configuration for your odometry encoders, kind of having one on each side for the side of the robot, and then one kind of in the middle perpendicular to these two. It can be offset to the front or back of the robot. It doesn't really matter as long as it is perpendicular to these two. Also, before we start, I'm going to start stacking up here because it saves lines and it looks cleaner to me. And it, I'm sure it'll help you understand more by grouping the different sets of motors and servos and everything that belong together. So I'm going to start doing that from now on. First, in this calibration file, we need to declare our encoders. And those are declared as motors. And I'm just going to call this one left encoder and it popped up for me there because I've already written some things later in the code here. But I've got left encoder, right encoder, and middle encoder. Just like that. I've already declared an IMU, and the IMU is going to be used to later, and we're going to need a timer. And that will also be used later, and we'll see that a bit later as well. So we need to also declare some values here. They're all going to be declared as static final doubles because they belong to this class exclusively. They're not going to change. So that's why they're declared like that. And the first one is the calibration speed. And I'm going to set it at half power because that's what's worked best for me in the past. And now the static final double here we need is ticks per rev. Oh, I'll just call it rev. But that's ticks per revolution that we need. And my team uses the rev through bore encoders, and those have 8,192 ticks per revolution. Where's my semicolon? Okay. Next, we need to know our wheel diameter. And that is going to be whatever your wheel diameter is. Now, let's say this. Let's say I have an 100 millimeter diameter Omni wheel that I'm using. I don't know if that exists because I can't remember what mine is off the top of my head. So we're just going to use 100. But we want to keep everything here in inches. So we're going to divide that by 25.4. That's how you get from millimeters to inches. And now our wheel diameter is in inches. Last thing we need is the gear ratio. And if you have decided to, which is very rare if you've decided to use gears for your odometry encoders, but it happens. And this is the, I'm pretty sure it's the output divided by the input, or it could be the other way around. But as long as you know your ratio, you would put it in here. If you don't have a ratio, you just put one, because it's a one to one ratio. Now the last thing we got to do is calculate our ticks per inch. And using those values up here, we're going to go, I'm going to take the wheel diameter, and we're going to multiply it by pi, and that's math.pi. We have to capitalize. Okay, and that's going to be times gear ratio, which for me it doesn't matter. But for you, it might. And then we're going to divide it by the ticks per revolution. And that is how you get your ticks per inch. Okay. And now the last thing we need to do is we're going to create a bit of text, a couple of text files in the phone. And those text files are going to be used in our actual odometry programs. So the way we declare a text file is just by going file. And I'm going to call this one side. 
wheel separation file. And that is going to equal here, so you get a file app util dot get instance dot get settings file and this is the string of the file name. I'm gonna call it we can name it whatever we want. Side wheels separation file. And then we gotta put a semicolon at the end. And I'm gonna do that. Okay. And now we gotta do another file. And this one's gonna be called middle tick offset file. And that's going to be the same way. Like such. And that's the last thing we need to initialize. And we're going to be updating these files later. And you'll see how we update a text file a little later. So now I've already initialized the encoders here. Now, the, the important thing, the way I have my robot set up, I don't need to reverse any of the encoders whatsoever. You may have to reverse some encoders, but we're not going to reverse them because it's most likely plugged into another motor port that has a reliant motor on it. So if you reverse the encoder, henceforth, the motor is also reversed. So we got to make sure to use negatives wherever you would be reversed. So if... Like, say we're getting the position of the left encoder. You would go negative left encoder, get current position, rather than just left encoder, get current position. You never want to reverse an encoder, because that could affect so much more. So now, this is a void I created that just does the stop and reset encoder and then run without encoder. And I'll, you'll actually see that right here. And then everything's ready. I put some telemetry here because of the... IMU calibration. So let's now get started with our code here. So we're going to use a while loop. We're going to go while IMU.getAngularOrientation. We're going to want the first angle. This could be different for you. I use the first angle because of the way my rev hub is mounted. You may not use that first angle, it could be the second or third angle. Just consider how your rev hub is mapped and how that works there. And we're gonna do 90. And of course we have to add the and op mode is active here. And now we're going to set our motor powers here. So we're gonna go dot set power or set power. Set power and that's going to be negative. We wanna set our right sides negative calibration speed. So I'm just going to copy and paste this, kind of take the easy way out. And we're going to want to go back and then left, back left, and then take the negative off of the left motors. Okay, and now we're going to have an if loop if statement, actually, not a loop. If the angular orientation of the first angle, if that is less than 60, because that means we're getting close, or actually it doesn't. If it's less than 60, because we're not close yet, we're going to keep doing that. And then else, we're going to want to Already. We're going to want to take these, and we're going to want to divide them all by 2. Because we're getting close to our target, so we're going to want to slow down. This is kind of a cheap way to do this, but it works for the calibration file. And then we're going to want to break out of our while loop, because say the condition for the while loop is done. And then we're going to want to set all of our motors to zero like such 
now we're going to come a few lines down and now we have stopped our motion but we're not ready to calculate anything yet because we got to give the IMU a second to stabilize so we're going to do we're going to reset our timer here and then we're going to do another while loop so we're going to go while timer dot seconds well that's less than one we're going to go one second that should be enough to stabilize it and then while the op mode is active of course we're just going to do nothing you could add some telemetry here saying that you're waiting but i'm just going to do nothing here because we don't really need to do anything now we got to do some calculations here so we're going to want to get our angle first so i'm just going to call this one angle and it's going to get the angular orientation of the reference angle and then let's get the encoder difference next Now the encoder difference, we're going to take the absolute value of subtracting the absolute value of the encoders. So this is going to get a little long. So we're going to go math.abs and then inside of this here, we're going to do another math.abs. And this is going to be of our, let's start with our left encoder, dot get current position. It's things in my way here and then we're going to want to break out of that abs and we're going to subtract it from another math.abs of our right encoder dot get current position and then we're going to just getting a little long whoa okay just like that and now we're going to define our side. These are our side encoder tick offsets. And we're going to need, this is one of the values we're going to need to save to our text file, and I'll show you how to do that shortly. So our side encoder tick offset is going to equal the encoder difference divided by the angle. Next, we're going to need to calculate our separation. I'm going to call that side wheel separation. And that's actually, yeah, that right there is what we're going to put into our text file. So we're going to go 180 times the side encoder tick offset and that's going to be divided by what's it divided by ticks per inch times pi like such okay and now we got to get our middle offset I'm just going to call that middle tick offset and that's going to equal the middle encoder and we're going to get the current position of that divided by and we're going to go to radians here of our first angle Because we it makes sense for it to be radians. You don't have to understand why it's going to be radians, but you just have to know that it is radians here. So, and we gotta do our text files now. So, it's going to be read write file dot write file. Nah, it's going to be this. Let's start with the side wheel separation file. 
I go comma. Let's do. I'm just, just got to be string dot value of. And that's going to be the side wheel separation. And lastly, we got to do the same for the middle tick offset file. String dot value of middle tick offset. And you have successful, and after this, you've successfully calibrated and rewrote these files in your robot phone. And you can add some telemetry at the end and keep it in a loop so that you know that what these values are. But this video is getting a little long, so I'm going to stop it here. But that's going to be it for this video. We created a calibration file. And from all of us here at Fierce Fish, we hope you have a great day.